guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna plant up those four huge concrete containers that we recently moved out to the South Garden. So they've been cleaned out, the drip has been set up, we did that yesterday, and I've got some gorgeous plants to put in them. And three of the varieties are brand new for next year, for 2023. We got them early so that we could try them out and I'm really excited to use them in combination with some things that I do have some experience with and then we'll be able to report back and see how they do. Just look at all of this glorious color. <gasps> look at it. We've got lots of fun things going on. In fact, I have a bunch of trays of seedlings for the cut flower garden, which really have nothing to do with this project. I just figured if we had time, we would maybe pop them in the ground. Let's start up here because this is gonna be our centerpiece plant. So these came out maybe a year or two ago. These are the Saturn Suncredibles. They are amazing plants. They grow about two to three feet tall and wide. And we tried one of these in the one plant per pot experiment in front of the greenhouse last year. And they did beautifully because they don't grow like normal sunflowers that, you know, come up on a stalk. And then even if they have multiple blooms they are usually up toward the top, these branch out really thickly and have blooms all over them. So they're super striking. And I got a hold of some big ones this year. I mean, look at this thing. I think these are gallon sized pots. Big thing to start out with, I love it. And then this one right here, brand new for next year, it's called Sweet Caroline Upside Black Coffee. So sweet potato vine, but it's got a climbing habit and spilling habit. That's how we're gonna use it today, you know, in the container to spill over the side. But I've got extra to plant on a uh, ranch panel out in the cut flower garden because I wanna see how well they do as a climber. But I love that color, especially with these Saturns. I think the contrast is gorgeous. And then there's this one, you guys, a Supertunia Mini Vista Yellow. The first Supertunia that's really like truly yellow, the Supertunia honey is yellow some of the time, but it's also like mustard and orange and kind of pink as well. This one just has the beautiful soft yellow blooms and I love it. So Vistas, whether it's a regular Supertunia Vista or a mini Vista like this one, they're really good for containers and landscape planting if you wanna put it in the flower bed. So I'm gonna try it probably both ways. Um, maybe one in each of the pots today and then I'll save the rest for the landscape. Moving to the other things in here, Elbrito coleus, which was this new last year? I grew it last year, I think for the first time. Phenomenal plant can handle all kinds of situations in terms of light. It's in the Color Blaze series, so it can do sun or shade. They get pretty good size in the sun. So I'm gonna really have to monitor the growth on these things or they will take over the pot. <laughs> they are so vigorous. I just love the color tones in these because they take on kind of like, they've got the burgundy and the red in the center, but then they take on kind of a salmon pink and then they've got the bright chartreuse edge. They glow. Don't you think they glow? Oh, they're so pretty. And then there's this one, Supertunia Vista, a uh, mini Vista. Yeah, mini Vista Midnight, another new one for next year. Look at how deep, deep purple these blooms are. Oh, I'm just so excited with all these new colors that are coming out. I think that the color with the, um, the uh, sunflowers will be really pretty. And then I've got a couple more here. See, I don't know exactly what we're gonna use until we get into the project, but I was just really wanting to show you all these plants. Supertunia Persimmon. Another new one for next year. This one has a very tropical vibe to it. Pink with that yellow throat. It gives it kind of like a, I don't know, iridescent quality. But I thought that they were actually very pretty paired up with these other things. Uh, I've got some Super Bells Tangerine Punch, which looks good with the Coleus. I'm not sure. This is really the only one I'm really unsure if I'm gonna use. And then I also have some Alaska, no, this is Kaleidoscope Mix Nasturtium. So these bloom, you know, red, yellow, orange, which I thought would be perfect, but I grow these mostly in containers for the leaf structure. There's nothing else really like it. They look like lily pads. And for those of you who have been watching our videos long enough, year before last, when we had the shallow savanna urns by our front yard before we tore apart the front yard, I put, you know, cannas and all kinds of things. I mean, I really packed those containers out, um, which is kind of what I want to do today because it was a spectacular show all summer. But I've used nasturtiums in there. I think it was cher something cherry. Uh, but they were awesome. The leaves just broadened out and got so big and they were such a unique um, touch to the container. I'm so used to using uh, other, you know, kind of foliage accents like sweet potato vine, which are awesome, but it's fun to change it up every once in a while. All that said, let's head out to the South Garden and get started. Here. 
here we are. You can see the four containers kind of lined up here. I do need to top them up with soil. I've got some slow release fertilizer there. And I just pulled all of these out of the gator. So that's kind of what we're going for. Look at that grouping of plants. Ugh. So I think what I want to do is walk through the first one, just kind of share my thoughts on the design process, because honestly, until I sit down and start the design process, I really never know how it's going to go. And then we will work on the other three, probably a little bit quicker. These are roughly 22 inches, I think tall, 27 inch diameter. We can fit quite a bit in here. I have soil from bottom to top. Now you'll notice that there is already soil in here. I put soil in here last fall when we transplanted some boxwoods from the garden into these pots. Uh, these four actually did not do very well. They didn't fare very well. So we took the boxwoods out. So I felt like the soil wasn't taxed very much. There wasn't a very long period of time where the soil was in here. So we just left it and I decided to just top it up with fresh. So that's what I'm gonna do. You can see too that I've got drip tubing. Aaron and I came out here and set up the drip yesterday to these pots. So we're good to go there. So let's get this topped up really quick. I think it's gonna take one, maybe two bags. And this bag is wet, it was sitting outside. Plants will love it. Oh my, I'm gonna get dirty. Actually, I think that that's a little bit more. It does settle some too, so you wanna kinda of take that into consideration. Okay, you know, when we had these pots along our east fence line, you know, we still have the 10 over there. We had 14 to start with. Um, we had eventually some brick pads, kind of almost like a mini patio built underneath each one. So each one was level. And we've got these currently flanking our grass walkways going into the south garden. We thought if we really do enjoy these pots being here, maybe we will some time down the road, uh, have more brick pads built under these so they're nice and level. Uh, because I don't think we did a super great job of leveling them. Decent, not great. Okay, now we use some continuous release plant food. I don't really measure. I'll use this. This one's from Proven Winners or Biotone Starter Fertilizer is a really good one too. This one is heat activated. So hopefully we get some good heat. I've been watching the forecast and it looks like we're on the upward trend. Last Night before last, it got down to 31 degrees. Okay, so we are ready to plant. I'm creating a well in the center for our centerpiece plant. And this, these containers, we see them from all directions. So I really want to make sure that the centerpiece is centered. If you put a pot like this up against a wall, you can put your centerpiece down toward the back. And that always looks really nice. This one's fairly root bound. So I'm just going to fluff the roots just a little bit, not a lot. Oh. Isn't that just pretty? It just looks so happy and cheerful. And this thing, like I said, I mean, it'll fill in, um, but it doesn't get so enormously tall, which I appreciate. Uh, just because, you know, out here, the only thing I worry about for any of these plants out here is that they're so exposed and we get some pretty strong wind. So I'm glad that it's not like something so big and top heavy that I, I just think it'll be fine. I had a row of these planted in our cut flower garden last year and they did really well. All right, <laughs> wipe my hands off real quick. Next up, we're gonna do some color blaze coleus. Same kind of thing. Just kind of fluff those roots a little bit. You don't have to open up that whole root ball like crazy. Let's see. Let's do one here. We're gonna just spread these out kind of equally. Next one will go over here. Gosh, aren't those just, they're so pretty. Ah. And this one's gonna come back by me, right here. Now these color blades, what, 24? 24 to 40 inches tall. Now out here in the sun, it's most likely gonna want to get on the 40 inch side of things, which is way too big for a container arrangement like this. So what you have to do is just go in and pinch the tops off every once in a while, just to kind of keep the growth in check. Now, while this container is still fairly open, I'm going to feed the drip tube around. It's a lot easier at this point. So we're just gonna go around in a circle. This is the quarter inch brown drip tubing with uh, emitter holes every six inches. Okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna go around that centerpiece there.
try to keep my mess in check. Okay, now let's see how we should do this. I've got two of each of these. Mini Vista Midnight. I've got this, which maybe we put this one on this side. Persimmon. A yellow right there. That's pretty. We'll put our other foliage accent right here, the nasturtium. So we're kind of breaking it in half there. One foliage accent on this side, one on this side. And then we'll divvy these up. I'm not doing these exactly opposite one another. I feel like having the midnight too close to this one you might not be able to distinguish the two enough from each other. So I wanna make sure it's broken up by a lighter color. One thing I did wanna mention, because I've seen some question about it, is whether or not to trim your supertunias when you're planting them in your container. Cause you know, you'll buy some that look like this, a little bit more leggy, some that are a little bit more tight in their growth habit. You know, I tend to only trim mine if they're crazy leggy, like I'm not gonna trim this one today. Um, and then I'll maybe give my supertunias and superbells a trim midsummer if they need it. It's not something I do as a rule. It's only if they kind of start to lull out and bloom and get a little stringy looking. A light trim can help them rejuvenate a little bit, but it's not something you necessarily need to do. So I just wanted to kind of address that at some point this spring because I've noticed it being a question out there. So anyway, let's get these planted quick. Just make sure all the root balls are covered. I can't wait to show you guys this nasturtium as it develops further. Cause right now it looks like a little sad, but it won't. Not for long. You know, I could use a landscape staple in here too. Drip tubing can be a little bit uh, unruly. Pop that one right there. Gosh, I'm so excited about this yellow one. So beautiful. Oh, that looks so pretty, you guys. I love this mix of color. I love all of the interest in this, these pots. And as they grow and develop and fill in, it's gonna be quite a show. So anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing on the next three. Let's get it done and then we'll take a look. with how these came out. I think they're gonna be so beautiful out here. And uh, now I was two coleus short. I have more coleus coming. I'll show you that container. Um, so that one's not quite as filled up, but the rest of them, oh, so pretty. Look at these. I mean, going from nothing to just full of color and interest. Isn't that satisfying? I mean, first off, the sunflowers are just huge. I do think I'm going to help them out a little bit. You can see we have a slight breeze today. I mean, it's not even windy today. Um, so I feel like even though they don't get so big that I think that they'll break or topple over, I think they will want to kind of cruise that direction because of wind. Hi, baby girl. We have a visitor. How are you? Hi, I like your shoes. Yeah, you wanna come up or you wanna, you wanna explore? You wanna come up? Okay. Samantha and Benjamin are on a walk out here right now. Anyway, I think I'm just gonna put a little ring around the sunflowers just to kind of keep them centered. But look at that coleus. Oh my goodness, with the other colors in here. So pretty, do you love that? Look at the colors. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, can you say flower? Flower. Can you say flower? Like I said, these will want to grow and just get absolutely enormous, which I think is gonna be awesome because if they fill in this area here, and then we have some sunflowers kind of popping out through the foliage of the coleus, and then just kind of have them incorporated together, these will probably provide some support 
for these. And then I think the disbursement of the rest of the colors worked out really nicely. I made sure that I had a persimmon next to the black coffee sweet potato vine and then the yellow as well. So when the yellow kind of fills in here and the persimmon fills in here, it'll be a beautiful contrast of color. Uh, and then around this side, we've got the Midnight, Supertunia Vista Midnight. You can already tell the growth habit of this one, how it's gonna wanna spread out maybe a little bit further. And then we've got the Nasturtium. Oh, and a jumping spider. Check that out. That's a big one. Hello, little dude. Let's take a look at the rest of these. Okay, so the same. <laughs> but absolutely gorgeous. I also love the color in the center of the Saturn, how it's mirrored in the coleus. I think everything just married together really nicely. The next container down here is the one that doesn't have all the coleus in it. And honestly, like it's a beautiful bridge, I think between the tall centerpiece and the lower stuff, um, but you wouldn't really need it because this sunflower will branch out and fill in too. So that's just something to consider if you like it a little less full look. Um, a little bit more flowers, less foliage. That's totally something you can do. It's completely like personal, personal preference. And then here's the last one right here. I need to water all of them in today. So I will be getting that done. But like I said, they are on drip. They're attached to the flower beds. The drip is attached to the flower beds they're sitting in. So they should run every day, but it is something we will keep our eye on for sure. One thing to keep in mind about containers like this, if you want really high performance out of plants like this, and they are high performing plants, they're very vigorous, all of these, you wanna make sure to keep them on a consistent feeding schedule. Uh, you get the most bang for your buck that way. They will perform all season long. Uh, we try to do it once a week. That doesn't mean it always happens, but that's what we attempt to do. We use a water soluble fertilizer, the proven winners one once a week. And then, you know, if we miss a week or two here or there, it's kind of nice to know that there's a continuous release fertilizer mixed into the soil. It usually lasts a good six to eight weeks. You can reapply it mid season if you want to, but it's nice to know there's something backup, you know, a backup plan already mixed in the soil uh, because these plants with how fast they grow and how much they bloom, they really utilize quite a bit of food. And that is it for today's project. Super excited about all of these plants. I was really looking forward to showing you the new ones for next year and really I'm excited about how they do this year and giving you progress reports. Uh, I am going to water them in today even though they are on drip just to make sure all the soil is settled and I'm going to go find some sort of support for these sunflowers. Something that you can't really see, it won't be visible, but something just to keep it in the center of the pot, you know, because the wind is inevitable around here and they are protected by nothing. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.